Hi, my name is Peter Mastriani and welcome to the Buyer's Guide podcast where we talk all things property and finance. On today's show, I'm speaking with Robert Bowman, who's a financial planner, an accountant and a business advisor with more than 20 years worth of experience. He holds a Bachelor in Accounting from the University of Tennessee and a Master's in Finance from Georgia State University. The reason that uh, I've wanted to bring Robert onto the show is because he has a real passion to educate and and empower people to really take um, control of their their financial future. He's a a genuine straight shooter and he's a a specialist in really helping people get on the right financial path and he's going to be sharing some of his tips with us today. So let's get to it. Hey Robert, thank you for joining us on the Buyer's Guide podcast. Now, you have a, a wealth of experience, not only as an accountant, but also as a, a financial advisor. So why don't uh, you start off by perhaps sharing some of the, uh, perhaps the, the more common issues or, or problems that you may typically tend to see with, with individual finances? I think the biggest problem is all the, it's a simple analogy it's not easy it's simple but it's not easy it's back to having the right foundations Mm -hmm. and those foundations are as simple as having a budget that works and also having a plan for the future but we find that a lot of people come to us and have have neither have neither a budget or or, or a plan for the future oh absolutely and the the, the, you know the great thing about it is it doesn't matter where you're at it matters where you want to go so I say to people, if you get started, at least you're on a journey. Most people wait till, you know, they, they've paid off the mortgage, they've raised the kids, and they come and say, I want to do some retirement planning. Well, if they would have started 30 years before, they would have had this amazing thing called compound interest work for them for 30 years. Mm. And it's, you know, as, uh, as Edison said, it's the eighth wonder of the world. So the longer we wait, the less time we have to make mistakes, but also to take advantage of things. So we find a lot of people don't get the basics right. So we here are very adamant about getting the basics right so we can build on it. So also, if there's a problem, you can then you have a strategy to, to address it. And the strategy is you have a budget in place and know what you want to do. And you can go back and say, well, what do I adjust or what can I change or what can I do better? Because most people don't even have that. And how many people really ever start a trip without a map or without plans? You know what I mean? But we spend this whole, our whole life with no plan and hoping we're going to retire on to a great lifestyle. And to be honest, you, the numbers are stark. 3% of people retire financially independent. That means that they, they can do what they want. About another 15% re- retire, but not on the pension. 80% of people get some form of pension or not. I know we're entitled to it, but it'd be great not to get it because then we have a lot more choices. So I think starting early and getting a plan is the most important thing. So starting early uh, when it comes to your, your household uh, accounting, I guess, um, how difficult is it for, for most people to actually implement a budget? Is it difficult because it's um, just ignored, because it may be too hard to do, because they know once they start going down that journey, it might mean some sacrifices perhaps? Or Well, I think you're, you know, you're exactly right. I think it's the unknown to everybody, I think. You know, like I say, what you do, I think Dr. Phil says, what you don't acknowledge, you can't fix. So okay, yeah. if, 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 we, if we don't look at our budget, we can't fix it. And sometimes the fixes can be painful. Mm-hmm. But the funny thing is most of the time the fixes are painful. It, it's, but it's the biggest thing about a budget is making the decision rather than letting circumstances take effect on you. You know, if you knew that you were going to uh, want something, a big trip in a year, and you had budgeted for it, and you're sitting at the checkout line and it's also up for $10, you might not get it because that trip around the world is more important. Most people don't have something else in mind when they're making those little decisions. And those little 5 and $10 decisions we make every day, every week of our life, eat away at our budget. So it's not hard, but it, it takes some commitment. And it's the, it's the fear of the unknown. Mm. You know, and I think, but every person I've seen that's done it, and they're very few, believe me, we offer to all our clients. But most of them say, oh, no, I've got one. And I'll tell you this, I have not seen, out of, I don't know, hundreds of clients probably at least, I said, let me see your budget. I've had four or five sending me their budget. Mm. And it usually is on a scrap of paper and it has no relevance. Yeah. So I think that if you start there and you start young enough, 
you build huge habits. What you also do, if you do it properly, you give your kids the best financial education for the rest of their life. Okay. So if that's the starting point, what are the, the necessary steps that people will, will need to actually implement along that journey? Is there a, a structured approach that you could perhaps recommend? Or Yeah, absolutely. So we've been doing this for a long time, and we've really – it's been one of our biggest frustrations working with clients because when clients hit a problem, the first thing they want to do is unwind their investments or look at selling that investment. Free up some cash. Yeah, find some cash quick. And you, you know, if you buy a property today, you have to wait 25 years to really maximize your gain. Where if you sell it in 10 years, you'll make nothing. But if you wait 25, it'll change your life. So what we try to get people to do, and so this frustration has been one of my bugbears. So I sat down some time ago and started working with some clients to say, how do we do, how do we build a budget program for you that works? So through my frustration and, and trying to get clients, so rather than me telling and trying to give them the tools, I wrote a book called The Five Steps to the Financial Independence. And within that book, there's worksheets and stuff to help you develop the systems to actually start to monitor your money. And once you, the hardest thing is doing the budget, and it's really not that hard. And once we come to grips with it, which is, you know, the, 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 the rotten talk, well, do I have to give up? My coffee every day. No, you don't have to give up anything. <laughs> yeah. But if you don't, if you don't want to give up anything today, you'll pay tomorrow. Does that make yes. sense? Yes. So I don't care how much money you make. I have clients that make combined income of eighty thousand, and the combined incomes of a million dollars, and they both have problems with money. Mm. Mm. So they don't have enough. So you know, you, you go, how do people making a million dollars not have enough? Well, the cars they drive, the houses. That, the more money we make, the more we spend if we don't take control of it. So. I started the I started that program and it evolved over a couple of years to where I finally got it to where most of our clients now as part of our we have a thing called the wealth plan which is a series of things we help the client with we do a budget and the budget is 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 required of that program because if you don't know how much you have we can't help you uh, basically set your life up because I don't want to have a conversation in a year you saying oh I don't have enough money well so we did a budget here we go let's have a look at how we fix up the budget or what what So it starts with, um, I guess, the, the definition of, of actually what you want to achieve or what issues you perhaps want to resolve. You get the budget in, in place, and, and then what happens thereafter? Yeah. Well, I'll just the five steps are pretty, pretty, pretty – they're set out in a certain way. The first one is let's sit down and talk about your goals and your aspirations. Where do you want to be? What do you want to happen? We all want to pay our mortgage off. We all want to educate our kids, and we all want to retire well. So there are the three that we know. But what do we want along the way? What kind of house do we want? Let's build some excitement about your budget, why you want to do this. You know, if you don't have a reason to give something up, you're not going to give it up. But if you see that house you want or that vacation you want or that car you want or that education you want for your kids, you might give something up. So we start there and really get clear on your goals. We make we make you want to – got to feel them. You know, they say about the car. If you really want that car, go down and do a test drive. And nothing, like, nothing like sitting in there smelling the leather. And, <laughs> that new car smell. <laughs> yeah, and punching and, and hitting the hitting the accelerator, and just going crazy. You know what I mean? It, it gives you. So let's get the why, Let's get the reason why that you want to do something. The next step is we. I've developed a little uh, ebook that tells you how to organize your records. Because most people, problem is the records are all over the place. Because they're scattered here, there, and everywhere. So in this thing, it's a, it's a little. Program that once you set your records up, and it's a following system. You'll never have to look for them again. So once that's done, once that's done, and you've got all your records in the right place, then we can go to we look at where we're at. So what assets do we have? What liabilities do we have? Usually people never look at that, and it's probably the it's probably the most you know the, the almost scares them. Well, I don't have enough for anything. Well, okay. We've acknowledged that. We don't care about that. Let's move forward. Mm -hmm. As long as we know, it doesn't matter what situation we're in. It matters what the plan is to move forward. You know, we can always get out of the situation if we acknowledge it and move forward. So most people, as a general rule, every year should sit down and say, what's my house worth? What's my super worth? What's this worth? What do I owe? And see if they've gone forwards or backwards. It's a simple number. If the number's gone, if the asset, if the net asset's gone up, you've done well. If it's gone down, you've done, done not so well. It doesn't make you overreact, but it's like keeping score. Yes. You know, we don't we don't keep score on anything. Then we sit down with the budget and we do the budget. We've developed an Excel spreadsheet that you fill in your expenditure for weekly, monthly, bi-weekly through the year. It can be rough 
as long as it's a start. So we get you started. And that budget then uh, kicks out three kinds of numbers. One is your fixed fee, your fixed expenses, which is your mortgage and stuff. The next one is your variable, like your phone bills and stuff like that. And the last one account is your weekly spend. Yes. Everybody's budget gets ruined by the last one. Yeah. That's where we make those, you know, those uh, purchases that we really didn't want at the, in a couple of weeks from now. It's where we use our credit card really nearly. Sure. Worst thing about credit cards is it's not our money until we yes. have to pay it off. Yes. So we that's the account we want to control. So we actually tell people get rid of the credit cards and start using that account to live Monday to Monday to Sunday. And if you run out of money on Friday, you eat at home. Yeah. You don't have the dinner. And what happens is once people get a hold of that number, they, they do they do wonderful things. I've you know the they shop at Aldi. Now I've seen people that were in strife that know you know a personal loan of thirty five thousand. You know, sixteen months later have paid that off and now they're attacking their mortgage. They're, you know, but they had a reason why they they, they, yeah. they saw what the, you know, they wanted to educate their kids a certain way and they had the school picked out and they knew they couldn't afford it the way they were going. But then they saw once they fit, finished up these little debts and stuff, they'd have the money to do it. It inspired them. So getting that plan right, and if you if you do it the way I say, you don't have to monitor it because that one account I gave you is a self monitor account. It takes if you run out of money, you know you don't have enough. If you if you got extra money, you know you're using too much and you adjust it. And then the last one is once you have control of it, you see what you're spending. You can start to you can start to change things. You can look at different maybe you know uh, telephone you know mobile phone providers, you know internet providers, and it gives you some stuff to start to. See where you can save some money. Absolutely. You know, even even talking to a mortgage broker like you, Peter, and just consolidating some debt. Because yep. once you have control of it, you're not afraid of doing things. But when yes. you have money going everywhere with no control, you know, yep. you're, 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 you know, you're just not going to You don't know where to start. That's right. Yeah. So that's kind of the steps right there. And, you know, it, it takes some time. But, you know, you have to do it once. Yes. You really have to do it once. Yeah. Um, because the next time, you know, the first time can take, we have some clients that takes two appointments and they, you know, they're him and hawing and they don't, you can see they don't want to do it. I think the best one I've ever saw was the, they, they came in here and the clients and, and um, the lady said, oh, you know, she had down, she, you know, for, I don't know, makeup and stuff, you know, a thousand a year and it was actually 5,000. Oh, well, okay. No. Yeah. yeah, but he wanted her to look good. So once they acknowledged that, there was no problem. Yes. All, all they did is accepted that, you know, there was something. That's what the cost was. Yeah. guys that go, you know, some guys go to the pub. And, you know, I'm not saying it costs a lot, but sometimes it does. We're smoking. Smoking is the classic, you know. Mm. People, you know, smoking is a problem, but people, some, most people it. want to give up smoking, but it's just something. And we all have bad habits and it's hard to get rid of. But once they see how much it costs, mm. and, if, and if a husband or wife are smoking, it can be two, three hundred bucks a week. Yes. Yes. And they Absolutely. freak out. Yeah. And I go, okay, what are you going to do about it? Well, we can't give up smoking. Well, you know, I've seen them go to roll your own and all these things. Yeah. yeah. And it, it changes how they think about it. And what happens is now they have a reason to quit because they can see that, well, you know, $15,000 a year after tax. Mm. We can travel the world. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, so does that, does that make sense? Absolutely. So, um, Take action or take some accountability and, and responsibility, set out a structure and, and work towards a budget. And once you start seeing some incremental increases to your cash flow, it'll start to make all the difference. Well, imagine, imagine just sitting down with your kids and setting a budget. You know, this is my story, but I've had two daughters. And when they hit high school, I sit down and say, how much does it cost you to live? Mm. You know, tell me how much. And they get they add, up, they add it up and, I get, and that's what they get every week. Yeah. They're not asking me for $2 for this or $5 for this. They get a certain amount a week. Yeah. They need more later. They can talk about it, but they've learned, you know, I mean, I, I think they're better with money than me, to be honest. Because what they started <laughs> when they were. the right foundations. Yeah. That's why, Robert. I mean, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, so very good. Now, uh, I've seen uh, some of the tools that you do provide to, to your clients and uh, some of the, the budget templates that you do have on Excel as well. And uh, I know that you've got a, a couple of different sites run up and um, you'd also mentioned that uh, uh, there would be a, a free gift that uh, our listeners would be able to access. So can you tell us a, a little bit more about okay. that, Robin? Well, the, okay, so there is the, so first off we have the financialindependentkit.com mm -hmm. website, mm -hmm. which has all the tools that you will need to, to get this started. Mm -hmm. It can be a bit overwhelming and I understand that, okay? Because, you know, 
I'm, I don't, I don't go do a plumber's job because I don't know what to do. So what, so we need to go to people that know what they're doing. So yes. since anybody on your podcast is talking to me, I'm happy to give an hour of my time. If they've looked at the budget and read it to come in to help them sort it out. Okay. And in an hour, we can cover a lot. We can really Absolutely. drill down. Now, the, the catch is they have to have attempted the budget, okay? Yeah. Because I'm not going to sit here and talk about it. Yeah. Because this is an action based event. And I promise you, once you do the budget, even you attempt it, I will help you get it to where you can work it. And once you work it, you'll never look back if you believe it. If, if you want to move forward, this is the simplest way. An hour of my, of anybody's time that has this spirit that we have can help you say, well, let's look at this. Let's look at that. We're just looking for a couple numbers for you to work with. And once we get the numbers, it's not static. We don't ever live with them. Now I said to a client, if you get a raise, well, you don't, you don't, you don't, you take some of that money and you enjoy life. Mm. You should also enjoy life, but you don't take all the raise and, and yep. for it, right? But most people don't make conscious decisions. It just goes to the bank account and the bank accounts empty. They haven't thought about it. So to your, to, to anybody listening, if they go into financialindependentkit.com and download stuff, have a look at it, make an attempt. It doesn't have to be a real hard attempt. I'll give you an hour and I'll sit down and I'll really answer any of your questions. I'll look at what you've done and, you know, give you my, my, my experience and say, listen, look at this. Let's do that. And we'll finish off the budget, whether it works for you and after that or not. But at least you should walk out of here in an hour, a bit longer with a budget in place to at least get you started. Mm -hmm. uh, I, you know, and because I'm passionate about people getting financially right, because you know, the difference in your life is amazing. You might have to give up a little bit, very little. You won't even notice it once you start and what it will do with the other end of your life with your retirement. And all those things that you want to travel the world, you'll be able to do that if you get started. The earlier you start, the better chance you have. That's excellent, Robert, and uh, a very generous offer uh, for, for you to make as well. So for people to to access that kit, just that website name again, please. Financial Independence Kit. Dot com. Dot com. Yeah, no, no way you on that. Okay. No problems at all, Robert. Look, fantastic. Thank you very much for the time that uh, you've been able to, to give up to, to share your advice and, and professional opinion with, with our listeners here. And, and thanks again for, for making that offer. It's been great to have you on the show. Peter, thanks very much for, for the podcast. I appreciate it. No problems at all. And uh, thanks everyone for joining into the Buyer's Guide podcast. And until next time, bye-bye.